start, if you've experienced any sort of physics, you've heard of the name Newton. The guy who famously had an apple fall on his head while sitting under a tree one day and went, hurrah, gravity. Well, I don't know how true that story is, but Newton did discover a lot of rules about how the universe works, which form the basis for most physics, even today, 350 years later. Newton's three laws of motion are some of these rules, but if you do a quick search on Google, you'll probably find something about inertial reference frames, vector sum, and change of state, which is enough to put most people off physics for life. Good news is, it doesn't have to be boring and complicated, so here are Newton's laws of motion in a less boring, easy to understand way. Before we start, just one important piece of terminology. It's an easy one, I promise. A force is any push or pull resulting from an object's interaction with another object. So whether it's gravity, magnets, or a physical push or pull, it's all known as a force. With that out of the way, on to the laws. Number one, Newton's first law. Newton's law of inertia is pretty straightforward. Any object that isn't moving currently will continue not moving forever, unless a force pushes it. This makes sense, right? If something isn't moving, the only way to get it to move is to apply a force to it. Otherwise, we would have inanimate objects flying off all over the place. The complicated part of this law is that it applies the other way around too. So if something is moving, it will never stop moving unless a force pushes it. And that seems counterintuitive to us humans. Everything we have experienced about the world is that if something is moving, if you throw something, if you take your foot off the pedal in your car, it will all eventually stop. So does this prove the law wrong? Nope. Completely the opposite. It proves it right. Not because everything slows down by itself, but because we just aren't seeing the full picture. A small hidden force called friction that acts between the object and any surfaces it touches, as well as air. So if you went to space where there is no air drag or friction and you threw a ball, it will go on forever until it hits something somewhere out there. Number two, Newton's second law. Newton's second law adds on to what we learned in the first law. This law describes how much the force acting on an object will affect it in terms of its acceleration. Simply put, F equals ma. This little equation relates the size of the force, the size of the object it's moving, and how much it accelerates. So if there's a really large force, it will give a really large acceleration compared to an object of the same mass with a small force acting. This equation can be rearranged to give a equals f over m or m equals f over a to describe what would happen in cases where the forces or accelerations were equal. Number three, Newton's third law. Newton's third law is best stated as every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And it is probably the easiest to understand. If you and I are pushing against each other, I must be pushing you with the same force that you are pushing me. This can be proven using Newton's second law. Because we are not moving, our acceleration is zero. So the forces we apply to each other must cancel out to also give zero. Another way to look at this is if you're sitting on your chair. Gravity is pulling you down, so your weight is creating a force on the chair. But you aren't falling, so the chair is supporting you by providing a force to you. An equal and opposite reaction. So there you have it, Newton's Laws of Motion. Easy. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what other laws of physics you want to know about. Thanks for watching and keep wondering.